Hey, I'm Kate from the Small Things blog. This tutorial will teach you how to do these really soft, lived-in waves. And these are the kind of waves that like look better as the day goes on because they just kind of relax and look super beachy and natural. Um, so these are inspired by Anne Cotran. I believe I'm pronouncing his name right. You've probably seen his models all over Pinterest because they have the most beautiful, soft, balayage-colored hair with these just almost barely curled relaxed waves. So he would probably say this is a little over curled, but by like two o'clock, these will soften up even a little bit more and look closer to his masterpieces. So I'm starting with hair that I washed last night. I blew it dry and pulled a brush through it so it was nice and smooth. And then I put it in a ponytail right on top of my head and slept like that all night. So when I took the ponytail out this morning, I have a nice lift at the crown and everything's still smooth. I don't have a kink in it because I used one of those fabric elastics so it wasn't going to be too tight of a ponytail. But this gives me a nice texture to work with to do those soft lived in waves. So I picked up a new curling iron because I was dying to give this one a try. It is the GHD 1.25 barrel curling iron. Um, this is the box that came in and this is a fantastic iron. I'm a huge, huge fan of the GHD flat iron and I believe their curling irons are somewhat new, maybe just new to me, but I heard about them lately and I was like, I've got to try it. So it gets super hot, super fast, and it ensures that there's even heat throughout the entire rod and the top part. So you're going to get an even curl. Sometimes with the cheaper curling irons, all of the heat is just in the barrel. And so this, you know, presses the hair against the barrel, but it doesn't add much heat to it. And so you might get an uneven, softer curl. Um, this is gonna make your hair super curly. So if you have hair that is resistant or the curls fall out, this curling iron will be your friend. It is an investment. GHD makes high quality stuff. So I would argue that it's a curling iron you'll probably have for years and years and years but I really, really like it. My hair curls somewhat easily, so I barely have to hold it on there. So you kind of need to play around with it. So turn on your curling iron. That's right, that is the noise that the GHD curve makes. Um, I feel like I'm in the Jetsons when I turn that on. And go ahead and section your hair off from your temples up. We're not gonna do too many sections because we don't want too many curls. And that is the curling iron telling me it's hot and ready. So you saw how quickly that worked. I'm using a duck bill clip just to secure the hair out of the way. So the key thing you need to keep in mind when you're doing these lived-in waves is you don't want to put the curling iron too close to your scalp and you want to leave about two to three inches of your ends out of the iron. If you curl your ends too much, it's going to look overdone and you'll totally lose the effect. You also want to take somewhat large of sections because you don't want the ringlets too small. So that's as close as I'm going to go. And then I'm going to wind it up and leave my ends out. So the majority of the curl is just going to be in the middle section. You want to pick up a rather large section near your temple and this will be the quickest curl you do because we want this to be the softest. Okay. 
Go ahead and comb that out right after it drops. So you get just barely a wave in there. So once you're finished curling everything, it's time to work a little bit of texture spray in there. Um, I have been loving the Amica Undone Texture Spray. I've used this in a tutorial recently as well. Um, texture sprays range. Some are really um, like one spritz and you have a lot of texture in your hair and others you have to work a lot of it in. I would say if you're new to texture spray, this would be a good one to try because you can really layer it and build on it and it's not the sort of product that Oh crap, I sprayed way too much, my hair is destroyed. So don't hesitate to work a good deal of this in and just run your fingers through it and soften everything. texture spray added a bit of volume as well. This next part is completely optional depending on your hair type. My hair, although I would put it in the medium category, it's rather um, fine. So I have a lot of fine hair. So it tends to fall and go limp during the day. So I always like to put a little bit of tease at least in the bottom section to just incorporate some air under there and keep it popped up. If you have thicker hair than me or you don't want it quite as big as I do, don't worry about teasing. But if you are going to tease, don't tease too much at the crown because that'll look overdone. So that's why I'm focusing just sort of on the middle part of the hair. And finally, instead of finishing with my signature Kenra Volume 25, I'm going to use a looser hold hairspray today. Um, I still love Kenra Volume 25 for everything, but in an effort to make this really soft and lived in and sort of soften as the day goes, I'm gonna use a medium hold hairspray. So this is also by Amika, I love this brand. This is their touchable hairspray. Um, it'll give you hold, not nearly as much as Kenra Volume 25, but the touchable part of it is really true. You can still touch your hair and feel it during the day and it doesn't feel like it's stiff with hairspray, but your hair won't fall out either. So that is the final look. The key, like I said at the beginning, don't curl your ends too much, don't curl too close to the root, and work plenty of texture spray in as you finish. If you want to see any other hair tutorials, be sure to visit thesmallthingsblog.com.